Hello everyone, Mr. Fuller here again with another video lesson. Today's lesson will be on dividing fractions and mixed numbers. So start off with a little bit of humor here, so hopefully I'll lighten the mood. Um, so today we're going to look how to divide the fractions pictorially as well as concretely. Um, I know with my class, pictorially seemed to be a little bit harder than concretely, but hopefully this will help out. So before we begin, uh, I'm just going to start off with just a little bit of how we got to think of dividing fractions. So in previous lessons we've already divided whole numbers with fractions. So um, I'm just going to put this up here really quick. So um, let's go 2 divided by 1 half. So essentially what our question is, how many 1 halves will fit into 2? So if we draw a picture and we draw two holes, we'll pretend those are worth one each and they're the same. We want to know how many one-halves fit in there. So how we got to think of this is if we draw pictures underneath with two holes again, we split them into two halves. We want to count up how many halves there are. So there's one half, there's two halves, there's three halves, and there's four halves. And that actually works out to our answer of four, as we learned in, in the previous examples. Um, we'll, we'll keep this kind of idea as we, as we go through pictorially, but let's try some, some examples here. So, example, solve in lowest terms. Two divided by three, or two over three divided by three over four. Pretty common fractions here, so we'll try them out. There's two ways we can do it concretely. So the first way we can do it, um, we can, well, let's just rewrite it here. I always like rewriting it. 2 thirds divided by 3 quarter. The first way we can think of this is, since we can't actually divide fractions, um, but we know how to multiply fractions, we can actually switch that. So one of our rules of thumb is, if we switch the top and the bottom number, we can actually change our division into a multiplication. So if we do that, we are actually going to look like this. So we have 2 over 3 divided by changes into times, and now it's 4 over 3. Okay, and this is something that we can, we've can we seen before. To do this, all we have to do is multiply across. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8, and 3 times 3, which is 9. And that is our final answer. That's the correct final answer. The other way we can do this is, I'll just uh, border this off here so we can keep it kind of separate. The other way we can do this is we can make it so both terms have the same denominator. Um, and then we can cancel out. So if we were to do this, um, our two denominators are 4 and 3 right now. So well, let's just write the equation again. So 2 over 3 divided by 3 over 4. Oh, what happened there? 3 over 4. Um, so, the line there, 3 over 4. So if we want to do the common denominator, the lowest common denominator between 3 and 4 is 12. We can change the denominators by timesing by a clever one. So, we know that if we were to times this by 4 over 4. 4 over 4 is the same thing as 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Anything times 1 is just itself. So we're actually not changing the answer, we're just changing what it looks like. And then on the other side here, we can times it by 3 over 3. And that's not changing the answer either. So, changing what we've known before, we can times across, times across, to get 4 times 2 is 8 over 12 divided by 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12. And as you can see, we cleverly picked the numbers so the denominator is the same. And now what we can do is, since the denominator is the same, we can actually just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Um, and if you look, now we have 8 divided by 9 which is if you look up here we have the same answer okay perfect so now we know all the two ways to do it concretely now let's look at the way we can do it pictorially so the same way as I kind of showed you before the question we want to ask is 
how many three quarters fits inside of two thirds. So let's draw out our two thirds. So I'll put it nice and big here. So we'll draw it nice and big. Okay. So now we have a unit of one broken into three. So in our answer here, we have them. Um, we wanted two out of three colored in. And that's just, we get that from the question. So I'll color those in, and now we have a diagram that has two out of three. What we want to do now is draw the same size diagram below. This time, we're going to separate it into four, because again, the question is, how many three quarters fits inside of two thirds? So now we need to break this up into quarters. And there we go. So the issue now that we're running into is that we want to count up how many two-thirds there are. So if we color in two-thirds, we get, or th sorry, we want to know how many three-quarters fits the side of two-thirds. So if we color in three-quarters, and let's do dots here. Dots, there's one, there's two, there's three. Well, what we actually notice here is that three quarters, one whole three quarters, does not actually fit inside of two thirds. So we know our answer is actually going to be below one. Now the issue comes across as well, our red line here doesn't match up with anything else. The way we want to get our lines to match up is we'll take this three, or the denominator in our first term, and break up each quarter into three different pieces. So I'll do that here. And I know my graph's not perfect, but if you were to draw a perfect graph, they would always match up. Okay, so now what we got to think here is we wanted to know how many of the three quarters fit inside of the two thirds. So our three quarter mark is right here. So this, if it was filled up, would be one unit. So we have to count up how many pieces are in this one unit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're in the end. So we know our answer is going to have a denominator of nine. Now all we have to do is just count up how much are colored in. So our red line stops right here. We got one colored in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our answer is eight over nine. And that goes along with our answers before. Well, that's how you do two different concretely as well as pictorial. We'll try one more example here because that one was below one. We'll try one that's above one here just so we have the two different examples. So let's try that. Um, so in the lowest terms, one and one half divided by one and one third. So again, I know I keep saying this, but this is the best way to think about it is we want to know how many one and one thirds fit inside of one and one half. So um, we'll try it pictorially first and then we'll do it concretely this time. So in this case, we have one and we want one half. So we color in one whole, color in one half. So again, what we want to do is match up our holes underneath. So we'll do that. So we matched up our holes. We got one and two. Now we want to know how many one and one third. So we're going to work in thirds here. We'll break them up into thirds. And there we go. We want to look at one whole and one third. So this right here is now what we fit inside. So as you can see, we have one and one third, which is my green line here, will fit at least into our one and one half because that goes right here. So we know the answer is greater than one. So we can actually put the answer one right there and we know that it's going to be that. Um, if we can fit, we could have fit another one and one-thirds, that would be number two. 
but in this case if we were to try to do another one of these green lines it goes way over what the red line shows so next thing is again we're running into trouble that the red line does not match up with the line on our black line here um, so we have to try to break our, our thirds up into more pieces so it matches up with the with the top one so solving law or uh, we were looking at two right here so we can break each piece up into two so let's do that and again my drawings aren't perfect but if they were they would have matched up 100 percent perfectly so next question we ask is how many pieces are fitting into one of the second term or one one of the uh, one one third so let's count them up we have one two three four five six seven eight we have eight different pieces in our one third so we know our denominator is going to be over eight but we have how many left over in before we get to our red line so we have just another one left over. So our answer is one and one eighth. If we want to put this back into an improper fraction, we just times across and add to the top one to get nine over eight as an answer. Okay, and that's our answer. Now we'll try our two different concretely ways. The thing is about these ones now, since they're in a mixed number, we have to put it into improper. So again, we have to use our little trick where we, we times and then add the top number, times the denominator by the, the whole number and then add it to the, the numerator. So we'll do that. So 1 and 1 half divided by 1 and 1 third. So we want to times across and then add to the first one. So we get 3 over 2 divided by times across, add to the top, so 3 times 1 is 1, or 3 plus 1 is 4 over 3. Okay, and now we're back to the same old tricks. We can flip this to change this into multiplication, so we have 3 over 2, now times by 3 over 4, and then we can use our little tricks again, timesing across, so 3 times 3 is equal to 9, 2 times 4 is equal to 8, and you can see we get the same answer again. Now if we do it in uh, common denominators, we can do that as well. So in this case, I'll write them out again. So I'll write them out as the, as the improper again. So we have 3 over 2 divided by 4 over 3. So it looks like 6 is going to be our common denominator, so we'll times this one by 3 over 3. We'll times this one by 2 over 2. And we get an answer of 3 times 3, which is 9 over 6, divided by 8 over 6. Again, since we have the same common denominators, we can cancel them out. Make sure I put that needle in there. And we have, if we read that out loud, we have 9 divided by 8. So again, get the same answer. Hopefully this helps out. If you're ever doing it pictorially, I know for my classes, um, if you're ever doing it pictorially and you're struggling with how much to break them into, sometimes it's a good idea that you change your denominators right here to be common. If they're common denominators, they're always going to match up on a line, and then you don't have to worry about breaking breaking them apart. So that might be something to consider if you if you like doing that first. Whatever helps you. Um, I'll put some more worksheets on my website, which is www.mrjfuller.com, if you'd like to check them out for more practice. Um, and hopefully this helps you out. Thanks so much.